able to enjoy ourselves uh, as soon as possible, the better the compliance with the stay-at-home order, the sooner we can squash the threat, start earning money, and enjoy our lives again, get back our lives in many ways, the sooner we can end this very cruel April Fool's joke. Um, slide three, it gives a update. This is, again, not the 4 p.m. update, which will be issued shortly. It's a midday update. We now have 3,338 cases identified in Colorado. 612 people are currently hospitalized. 50 counties. 77 deaths. Our hearts go out to the families uh, and loved ones of everybody who has been lost in this crisis. Uh, we've tested over 18,645 people, continuing to be one of the leading states uh, in, in, in the number um, per capita of tests being granted. Uh, there'll be a further update at four, uh, and as we indicated at previous events, I want to talk about the r naught value now. The r naught, the, the, the number of people that your that one positive person is likely to infect, was between three and four in Colorado before any social distancing measures went in. That was a catastrophe. We were literally seeing a doubling of the virus every one and a half to two days in Colorado. Now I want to return to this concept of R-naught value. Uh, through our physical distancing measures, we're trying to knock that number down as hard as we can. We have to get that number below one for the virus to start to die out. Uh, we showed the progress being made in the sense that it was doubling approximately every five days instead of every one and a half to two days. We'll continue to chart that. We hope that that increases, but ultimately, doubling every six, every seven days can still buy us time, but we have to ultimately get that below one. It has to do be reducing rather than increasing uh, for us to be effective in stamping this out uh, and being able to return to... Okay, now he just said we hope that it increases, but now he just said it has to decrease or reduce instead of increasing. I don't think he did his own notes. I think somebody else made them for him. So let's continue to watch and find out. To normalcy. Now, in an ideal world, we want to get this number as close to zero as possible. So the likelihood of anyone being infected, infected going about their daily routine is very low. But when the r naught death value is below 1, the number of people with the virus goes down rather than up, and that's clearly where we need to get. Now keep in mind there's a lag in what you'll still see. The hospital beds go up, tragically the deaths go up because of the timing. So we're not anything close to an r naught of 0 today, but let's just... Uh, say for a moment that if somehow this stopped transmitting in Colorado, you would have additional people that were admitted to the hospital in eight days and 10 days who had contracted it five days ago, who manifested symptoms and needed to go to the hospital a week later. Uh, and so you would still see that increase even if the transmission stopped. The transmission hasn't stopped. If we're staying at home, it's going down more. I hope you are staying at home. It's not just for saving the lives of others, it's potentially for saving your own life, and it's also for minimizing this horrific economic devastation and, dis and disruption so that we can get back to work and earn money and support ourselves and our families sooner rather than later. So we know right now we're doing this reduction in r not with a mallet, and all of my thoughts and efforts and our innovation team and others are working to get to a place where we can do that with a scalpel, where it's identifying quarantine rather than these uh, devastating measures that impact every single one of our lives. We now go to the visual representation of r naught. This shows uh, an r naught of three, just so our, our viewers know what this means. One person spreading it to three, to nine. This is why this virus has been so dangerous. It's extremely contagious, and that's why these extreme measures are being taken. Unlike, for instance, influenza, which has a great amount of resistance in the general population, A, people who've had their flu shots, but B, people who've had it and have had increased resistance because the pathogen has been out there. This is a novel coronavirus pathogen. There is little to none uh, built up antibodies or resistance among the general population. That's why this is spreading like wildfire, just as the 1918 influenza did when there was very little uh, resistance among the population uh, before the virus began. Next slide. I now want to, one of those three areas I talked about is our need for e personal protection equipment. This shows what we have. 
uh, what we have in our request that I outlined to uh, Vice President Mike Pence uh, in writing that our congressional delegation is aware of and also in touch with the Vice President on, Senator Bennett and Senator Gardner. Uh, it's, this shows by percent and by numbers the amount that we have uh, of the different materials that we've broken down that are needed for this medical surge. What we know now is not only are we facing a health care crisis, we're also facing a supply chain crisis. It's hampered our abilities to effectively respond to the health care needs. This is a global supply chain crisis, not only Colorado, not only United States of America, but the European countries and the countries across the world are all engaged in this mad scramble for equipment. Um, I can't begin to express to you the frustration that I have about our inability to get the mass and supplies that we need into our health care system that usually cost 58 cents and are plentiful. Now, we know that the national industrial capacity will kick in. This is a short to medium term issue. Another reason that these extraordinary stay at home measures are needed, because in a matter of a month or two months, there will be masks flowing out of our ears. They'll be all over because the industrial capacity will be focused on that. But that doesn't help us for what we need next week and the week after. Um, we know that not having gotten uh, nearly enough from the federal government, we've really taken it upon ourselves uh, as a state to engage in uh, the purchasing that we need and the supply channels we need to make sure that the supplies for the people of Colorado are met. Next slide, please. And I have to tell you how crazy ordering in this environment is. It seems like every Coloradan, uh, or at least the thousands that have contacted us, have a contact or an aunt or uncle in China or somewhere that's helping us. Uh, I want to thank the Chinese province of Hunan that is kindly sending us 10,000 masks. But we've also had to really scramble to be able to talk to Chinese factory owners and others. At one point, I even considered should we send over a our own state 747 to China and trust our negotiators to be able to fill it before it came back. Uh, we didn't have to do that. We have placed a number of purchase orders uh, and we have uh, a number of supplies that are in transit or in the supply chain. Now, all subject to verification. Uh, this might be April Fool's Day, but Colorado isn't going to be anybody's fool. We want to verify that the masks work and are not counterfeit uh, before we pay for them. And this is a, a challenge in, in buildings. Okay. Hopefully it's recording. Let me turn this way and see. Looks like it is. Maybe. Oh, yep, I can see it going up. Okay. So, this is getting a little fucking boring. I hate news. I don't care for the state of Colorado that much. But at least at the moment, I'm going to continue through this just to make sure that they haven't increased our stuff to the point of what they did down in Texas. If I'm correct on the location. Let me scroll back up here and double check. Laredo. So I would say Texas. What they did there is decided to say this. Change the curfew order and a new rule about covering your face. Being told by a city by a city of Laredo spokesperson that starting at twelve oh one AM on Thursday, all persons who leave their house must wear a mask or bandana to cover or or cover their mouth and nose or face a fine up to one thousand dollars to be determined by a judge. We've already gone over judges a long time ago in the courts and all that stuff. So we won't go over that again. Also, the curfew that was for minors 17 years and younger is now for all residents. So the curfew is now for all residents. Residents, residents can't be outside their homes from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m., the fine is $50 to $1,000 and is an arrestable offense, exception for those that need to go out because they need to work. But they must provide proof. Police officers will use discretion. Hmm. Now, I'm going to jump over to an email that my partner got 
to be able to go to work, to literally stand around all day and wipe down shelves and stuff like that at the Home Depot. Okay, that took me a little bit, but here's the letter. To my concern, this letter serves to confirm that said company is a Home Depot vendor whose company is providing services to the stores, distribution center, fulfillment centers, call center, data center, construction, and other support facilities in the area. The Home Depot has been deemed an essential retailer and is engaged in providing essential goods and services to the community even with the recent restrictions on work and travel outside of the home. Our stores remain open during the COVID-19 breakout, their outbreak, to provide goods and services to our community. The company associate presenting this letter is providing services to the Home Depot team or location that supports this effort. This work is essential in supporting the Home Depot to allow us to continue provide to provide goods and services during the state of emergency. And that's from Home Depot themselves for the company. Amazing, huh? So you know they put up stuff like that. There's stuff like that going on. We already saw what the Colorado governor was talking about. And what kind of malarkey is going on. So, I'll end this, upload it real quick, and then if there's anything else about any new orders from Colorado governor, I'll put it up for Anybody here in Colorado or those planning on traveling to Colorado will know before they get here or they already live here. Have a good day.